It is uh, my pleasure. Uh, I've sort of seen many and probably all of you before. So I'm Carmela DeLuca from the uh, YWIB group uh, that I chair. And we are, uh, I think, very lucky today to have with us uh, Catherine Bonter, who is currently the Director of Clinical Sciences at Ibsen. Uh, I've known her for a number of years and she's had a lot of different roles uh, and all very interesting. And she has a, a very sort of interesting background in that uh, she's been able to sort of do things both in the sort of not-for-profit or academic center and in the for-profit. So she has a very interesting combination of um, of uh, previous previous jobs and career aspects that she's going to tell us about uh, today. So like uh, the other two presentations, Catherine is going to do a presentation first and then we're going to open it up to questions. Um, so feel free to ask her anything. And Catherine, I think just completed a PhD not too long ago. So congratulations on that. So it's uh, Dr. Bonter, I guess. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to her and uh, look forward to the presentation. Oh, um, can you put up the slides? Um, well, hello everyone. I'm really uh, pleased to be here today and to have the opportunity to share um, my work history and experiences with you and hopefully you'll find it useful. Um, I think the overall message for me is that um, your career and your work life, learning, um, achieving things, it's all intertwined and it's not always, you know, a linear path. You don't necessarily know um, where each, each challenge is going to take you. Um, and there are a lot of different paths you could take that are very interesting. And I've had a very satisfying and long work life, as you can see here, starting um, my going to university with a B for a BSc in um, 1990 up until today, um, working at Ibsen in um, clinical development and clinical science. Um, and as Carmela said, I've done academic things and a lot of corporate things. Um, when I graduated from, um, when I was in graduate school, actually doing a PhD, things weren't going well. I dropped out and I, I met someone who had just created a small uh, company, which is a spin out of McGill. Um, her name is Clarissa Desjardins. And I went to work with her at this small biotech company thinking, I'm going to try it out and see if I, I like it. And what I discovered there is if you love science, um, you can do great science in a, in a company and you can also learn about a lot of other things, which are really important to enable science, especially clinical science, clinical development, bringing new therapies to patients, because that is a very risky and expensive enterprise, which requires private investment. And for that reason, it's, you know, the late stages of that are primarily the domain of, of companies. Um, Caprion is a proteomics company. Um, I worked there for, I think, five years. I learned about corporate development and in licensing and intellectual property. And then I worked at a, a, a antiviral HIV antiviral company called Ambrilia Biopharma, which is a Montreal company. And there I um, managed the IP portfolio. I imagine you guys have learned about IP. I'm assuming that you have given that, you know, Carmela. <laughs> um, I managed the IP portfolio and worked really closely with the researchers to translate what they were doing into value for the company so we could get more investment in the company and uh, develop more new therapies, test out more new therapies that might ultimately benefit um, patients. Um, that company went bankrupt and was actually, uh, went into uh, litigation with um, Merck, both 
sounding like kind of negative things, but I just point to those things because sometimes negative things happen and it can be an amazing um, learning opportunity. Um, then I worked at a, um, I went to work at a center of excellence in personalized medicine that was funded by the federal government. And our main objective was to folk to invest in public private partnerships. So academic pharma partnerships primarily um, to that, the, that would allow the government to make an investment in um, advancing pharmacogenomics and personalized medicine. And that was an amazing experience too. And I got to work with um, a, a private public sector organizations meant that are focused on promoting biotechnology and pharmaceutical innovation like BioCan RX, um, Genome Canada, I think we lost the slides, but that's okay. Genome Canada and um, other organizations. So there are a lot of different kinds of organizations that a science um, background uh, can take you into. So I would not be too narrow minded about, um, you know, your vision of your journey uh, going forward. Clementia was an amazing success, and I have some more info about that on the next slide. We uh, developed a repurposed a drug that pharma Roche Pharma had stopped developing uh, for a rare disease that's called called fibrodysplasia ossificans, Progressiva, and um, brought that that drug is uh, is in um, phase three now and soon to be. Um, hopefully uh, approved to treat this terrible rare disease where your muscle, where the, in young children, their muscle um, turns to bone. So here, I just pulled some press releases that relate to developments in the companies that I worked for, the organizations I worked for that I'm really proud of and that I felt like I had made a, a major contribution to, for example, um, Caprion Proteomics, we raised the highest financing ever for a, um, a, a Canadian biotech and we, we built a proteomics platform that's still in use today and has contributed to uh, many different um, development programs. Um, and at Clementia, we uh, built, we we acquired this uh, drug. We brought we we brought it forward into clinical development for two rare indications. We um, built this private company and then uh, put offered it on the on the stock market to become a public money and raise the money that we needed to um, continue with clinical development and ultimately. Um, not, not, you know, we sold that company to a larger pharma company with the capabilities to really finish our work and to bring um, palaveratine to patients with FOP. So this is kind of a snapshot of the kinds of things that I've been involved with that I think are extremely interesting and um, ultimately can have an impact and, and in the case of palaveratine will have an impact um, for patients who are suffering. Uh, next slide. So, just to wrap it up, my advice to you. Oh, sorry. I think there was, I was asked to say like two things that were, um, cha um, what was it, Car Carmela? Like things that, uh, I, you know, I didn't succeed at and how I overcame it. So I think, you know, not finishing, starting things and not finishing things, important things that I made big investments in. You know, I have a few examples of that in my, in my path. Um, so at the time it was a disappointment not to finish it, but I see in retrospect and the way I got past it was just to continue focusing on the opportunities that presented themselves to me and to be work hard and be passionate in my work. Um, and now having gone through all that, I look back and, and I don't regret those mistakes. I think everything you do, whether you succeed at it or not, is an opportunity um, to learn. So my advice is to explore, be curious, open to new paths, 
there's so many paths um, with a science background that you can pursue in the public sector and the private sector, um, all of which can have a major impact um, for patients. Uh, capitalize on your mistakes um, and really be open to see where your passion and hard work can take you and most of all, aim to make an impact on something that you really care about. If you don't care about what you're doing, if, it, if you don't feel like it's important to you, then look for another path. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. That's fantastic. Sorry about the blip with the video, but I could Ooh, not. Uh, I could not unmute myself. Unfortunately, uh, the girls probably haven't learned, uh, at least not for me, about uh, IP. So that would have been intellectual property, patents, and and trademarks and copyright is what she was talking about there. Um, but uh, we can have a discussion about that sometime if if people uh, are also uh, interested in that. Um, are there any questions? And I'm going to try to see you all because I've done something. So I'm not seeing you all. Oh, there must be questions. Come on. Yes, I see <laughs> Miriam has her hand up. So go ahead. So, like, I've known, I know you talked about like obstacles that you faced, but can you like elaborate more on that? And like, do you have any advice when if someone is going through an obstacle and how to overcome it? Yeah, well, I can two. So, 1, I did a lot of work. Um, in uh, graduate school, uh, doing a research project in in neuroscience and the results were just not panning out. My supervisor was leaving. And so I, I made a decision to just leave that behind. And move on, and I think when I made that decision, I probably, I didn't feel good about it. But having moved forward and just learned everything I could from the experience. Um, I see now in retrospect that the best thing to do, you know, of course, try your best to finish everything you start, but sometimes you just have to take a jump. And um, move to something new and have be optimistic that if you move ahead based on your gut feeling, that is going to take you in a good direction. You don't have to follow a well defined path, especially at, at your age. I think, like, at your age, you have to follow your gut feeling and you have to do, you have to work on study things and work on things that um, interest you and that you feel passionate about. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good answer to to recognize that you can learn from everything, even if it doesn't turn out the way you thought when you started it. Um, very important. I, I think I saw another hand up as well. Mia, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to know, like, what does a like what does a day at work sort of look like? Oh, oh, that's a great question. Um, well, right now, uh, my main focus is to um, work with the team to find new rare disease development opportunities um, for Ipsen to acquire and develop. So that involves a lot of research. So let's say it's for you know an, a rare disease that. Um, I don't know about myself and the team that I work in with. We learn everything we can about that disease. We discuss it. We prioritize the questions that we need to ask. We discuss with the company or, or that or an academic group that has the asset to understand everything they've done with the asset, all their all their data. Um, so it's a lot of research uh, on my own. It's a lot of writing, uh, summarizing findings. So it's very, it's, it's scientific research and then meetings to share information from different um, people from different backgrounds, uh, writing reports. It's very, it's diverse. 
sounds a little bit like a detective where you're looking for something and have to get all of your facts together and working with the team and then making a decision. Is this, you know, something the company wants to go forward with? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing I do in my daily job right now, which is super interesting is, um, you know, every company, you know, when you do clinical development, you have clinical trials and every clinical trial has a very well defined um, study plan, which is called a protocol that has to be approved by the FDA. It has to be approved by the um, research sites that are involved in the clinical trial. And so at Ipsen, I'm on what's called a, a protocol advisory committee. And for every protocol that's going to get submitted externally, that committee goes through the whole protocol, make sure that it's aligned with the objective for that program, make sure that it's scientifically designed in a sound way, that it's written in a clear way. Um, so that's like work that I've been involved in in the last couple of years that I find super interesting. There was one thing you said before that I just want to make sure the girls understand. You talked about the fact that you do in licensing. And so I don't know if all of you sort of really get the gist of that, but she's looking to sort of see products that other people might be developing for, for other diseases. And they try to bring them into their company because they're a big company. They've got resources to try to develop them. So they will work with these sometimes smaller, sometimes large companies as well, to bring in what she refers to as assets, so their, their technologies into their company so that they can develop them. Um, I saw that there was another question. Unfortunately, I, I don't know your name. It just comes up as study student, so you're wearing a mask. Do you want to ask your question? Unmute yourself. Um, so she actually typed her question in the chat. Oh, okay. Her classroom is loud, but I'll like say it for her. She yeah, says, thank you. Um, so her name is Hannah and Hannah is asking, um, how do you think we can become more engaged in STEM as a team? More engaged in STEM as a team. Well, um, I think that if you're really interested in science, and doing research, um, you know, even even at even at your age, um, I know that you have like um, science, uh, like uh, science projects that you probably do each year, and you know, you can probably go to uh, universities or through people you know and try to see if you can have some real life exposure to um, what's happening in an academic lab or in um, in a company either by doing you know having them help you with a project or by doing an internship and as you as you get into like university stage in the summertime, Definitely keep in mind, you know, companies are always looking for um, interns, not, ne not necessarily just because they need the help, but because they want to give back and inspire the next um, generation of uh, scientists. And because there's so little exposure in your education, I think, to, um, you know, what's happening in the biotech and pharmaceutical industry and all the different types of roles and uh, jobs that are there are within um, those companies. I think uh, companies want to bring young people in and make sure that they have exposure to that so they know what the possibilities are and can see them firsthand. And I would add participating in a forum like this, there's lots of opportunities for you guys to get involved and do more. It's our first year. So unfortunately, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to provide some some sort of interesting um, information, but we're open to ideas. So if there's something that you think that you would like to sort of see, we'd be happy to sort of work with you. The other thing I would say that Catherine sort of uh, mentioned as well is science fair projects. So when I was in high school, I did a lot of science fair projects and you really learn uh, and you see the sort of vastness of the, the the discipline and you know the kinds of things that other people are doing so i don't know if you in your school or in the ecosystem have access to science fairs but uh they can be a lot of fun and so if you do have an opportunity to do it 
it's extra work outside of class. Not everybody's into that, but it, it pays back in spades because it really opens your eyes to the different kinds of things that you can do. Um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. And I, and you know, it'd be cool if women in bio had support for girls that want to like take their science fair project to the next level and maybe connect them with researchers. Like I know I have connections with researchers. So one year when my daughter did her science fair project, you know, a friend of mine with a lab at McGill, you know, helped her do some of the work for a science fair project in the lab. So like, I think if those connections are made, that's those kinds of things are possibilities. No problem, Catherine. Thanks for the extra work. Yeah, but yeah no, we can definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll joke on the side. I mean, we definitely know a lot of people at the various universities and, um, and there's lots of other things. So we've started with the ambassador program, but we also do some other events. One of which I mentioned before about uh, that Tunda organized with, um, with McGill. And there's a second one that will be available at some point that uh, it was done with IRIC, uh, which is a, a sort of a biomedical uh, research institute associate with U of M. So there's lots of opportunities to sort of see what the different kinds of, of jobs, because I know when I was at your age, you know, I knew about being um, a scientist, whatever that meant, and being a doctor. But there is such a sort of rich tapestry of different things you can do. And what I really um, think is really interesting about Catherine's background is that it's not necessarily straightforward. So some people do have a very straightforward path, but she got into science doing a PhD and then realized maybe that wasn't for her and then moved to a company and recognizing what your opportunities are and seizing them. Um, some people call that, uh, you know, that you were lucky, but being able to recognize what's an opportunity and when to stop that's not luck. That's really sort of knowing yourself. And I think that uh, is one thing that's really important from Catherine's uh, message today. So we have a couple minutes left. Were there any other uh, questions for Catherine? Go ahead, Cindy. All right. Can you hear me well? Yes. Mm -hmm. perfect. Okay, cool. Um, so you said that you've worked with um, like a lot of companies and a lot of like you've worked on a lot of projects i was just wondering if you have any advices to give us you know when we're working with different people and like in a new environment and stuff like that mm. yes actually i do and i think that's such an important uh element of let's call it my strategy um you know whatever project you're working on whoever you're working with be in a learning always be in a learning mode and never underestimate what you're able to do um, um, and be a team player. So if you're in learning mode, you don't underestimate what you can do. You always like try to achieve more for yourself and do better. And you function as a team player with everybody else, inspiring them to do the same. That's when really great things happen. So you end up with this dynamic and I, I worked all through those different companies with a lot of the same people. And that's, what's really unique about those people that I've worked a lot with is we have that dynamic and it really, it feels like a team where everybody's contributing to their maximum ability. Nobody is the boss. Nobody, you know, of course, sometimes decisions have to be made and the decision rests with a certain person, but it's really, it's not hierarchical at all. It's a team effort just to achieve the things we want to achieve, everyone being the best they can and learning continuously. That's like one of the really fun things I think about being in the sciences. I'm not, I don't, I don't know about other areas, but in, in the kinds of roles I've had, that's one of the things that I enjoy the most. Thank you. Excellent. I think we have time probably for two more questions or at least one. And I encourage you all to ask, you know, whatever questions. I think that's one thing that's really important for everybody, but I think for girls in particular um, to feel comfortable asking questions and even, you know, if it doesn't come out exactly right or if it doesn't 
uh, you know, once you hear it, you're thinking, oh, maybe that's not that interesting a question. Just ask, because the worst thing that I see um, is people who have really interesting ideas and questions and just keep them to themselves. So um, if there are any more questions, then we'll we'll take one or two. And I had a you, question. Oh, maybe I yeah, don't I uh, raise see. Go ahead. Hand. Oh, okay, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. So what do you like the most about your job in general and the STEM field? Um, I like, I like that, um, your objective can be so motivating and important as, you know, helping, uh, uh, you know, ultimately trying to do something for, or for example, a group of patients with young children with a terrible rare disease. Like I find that so very motivating, um, to know that our efforts are toward that goal. And then the other thing that I like a lot, which goes back to my previous answer is that in, uh, that I can continuously learn every day, every day I'm learning, uh, and expanding my knowledge and my ability abilities and no, every, every day is different. Wonderful. Last question from anybody? Okay, then. Uh, Catherine, I really want to thank you. I uh, um, have always thought you've had such an incredibly interesting career. She didn't tell you a lot about the rare diseases that she's worked on, but they, uh, you know, some of them have been really awful. And the fact that they're advancing um, drugs to help these patients who have really uh, difficult lives is uh, inspirational. And I think her advice of whatever it is you do, whether it's in STEM or outside of STEM, that if you find something that you're passionate on uh, to work with and that you push forward, even if it's hard, you push forward, that you will, you will not feel that you're really working a lot of your life. You will just sort of feel that you're learning and, and enjoying every aspect of it. If ever what you decide to do feels you don't want to start your day ever, that should be a sign to you that maybe you need to take a different direction and, and that's okay. Um, but so Catherine, thank you very much for participating. I know you're extremely busy and so we uh, do all very much appreciate it. Thank you to all of the students from the study. I know you're taking your, your lunch and so you're going from class to class and uh, taking your uh, lunch to be with us today. So thank you for that. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with our last of the Girls Ask series. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Good luck. Bye. We also just want to say thank you so much. To this. Oh, you're very yeah. welcome. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.